Pretty sure, pretty sure you would have already had it. <laughs> All right. Let's set these kind of questions are here. Yeah. So. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Drift Guitars. My name's Chris. And I'm Matt. We got, he's choking on his coffee over there. Yeah, God. <laughs> Give it a second. <laughs> one. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I can't wait to be editing that later. <laughs> Today, we wanted to do a video on inlays. I have so many people, uh, every time I put up a picture of one of my inlays on the socials, uh, people say, when are you going to do a video on your inlays? Good news, this is not that video. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is a start. Uh, I think Chris and I have talked about how we want to approach that. And honestly, it's a really, really complex and complicated process. And it's not going to be one video. Mm. Um, the fact of the matter is right now, we don't really have time to do another video series. But also, um, we do want to at least lay a foundational knowledge, yeah. I think. There, there are things that you should know before, if you haven't done an inlay yet and you're interested in it, and even if you are ready to take your inlay game to the next level, there are some fundamental things that I think that Chris knows that he can share. Yeah, it's and that's kind of, it's been like this daunting thing, because like I want to do a video on like how to do an inlay. Like that's on paper simple, but it's also incredibly complex and there's so many what ifs and things like that. So what we're gonna do today, is have Matt give me five questions that I can answer. Yeah, and some of these questions are questions that I've read that you guys have left in the comments, so we're gonna try and address some of those. And then some of these are questions that are kind of geared towards uh, fundamental knowledge that maybe you should know before you start your inlay process or before you start doing inlays on a more yes. serious level. Okay, so here we got our first question. Um, how would you recommend getting into inlay work? And uh, you know, where would you start if you've never done one before? If you've never done an inlay before, it can seem like magic in many ways. It can seem impossible. Um, but the reality of it is, A, it's one of those few things in guitar building where you don't need many tools. First of all, on a tool front, all you need is a little jeweler saw like I have here. We'll put a link uh, to these in the in the description of the video. And I don't even know what the heck you call these things. I just made this one yesterday. <laughs> uh, it's it's like a, they sell these at Stumac. Well, if you don't know, the internet will tell the you. The internet will tell us. <laughs> we'll put a graphic somewhere. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but all it is is just a little piece of wood. You can make one in two seconds with a hole and a slit in it, and that's where you actually do all the, the cutting of it. And I would also recommend maybe getting yourself a little pin vise and some microscopic little drill bits. Besides that, all I do is save all of my scrap wood from my guitars, and I have bought some like Mother of Pearl, Black Mother of Pearl, some reconstituted stone. You don't need any of that stuff. All you need is some wood. So you can actually get into doing inlay work for really cheap. It doesn't take much of a financial investment. The other thing that I would recommend is that you start small. Start with something that has a um, few pieces and um, and what I would do is do something that you're excited about, something that you're passionate about, mm. um, which is going to make you um, uh, probably do a much better job with it. Sure. You sure, know, sure, sure. one of my very first inlays that I did actually was a um, was a monarch butterfly, and I had no idea how I was going to do it. And I remember I, I thought about it, and I went, I think I can figure this out. We put it on the bottom of the guitar. Uh, really simple at the time. It seemed really complicated, but I don't think it was more than probably 12 pieces. Uh, and I just kind of figured it out as I went along. I used some koa and some ebony and a couple <laughs> of fret markers on there for the dots on the uh, on the on the wings. Yeah. And I was super excited about it. And uh, that's the thing about inlays when you're actually making them, when you're cutting out all those little pieces, it can seem like this is a waste of time. This looks like crap. And then suddenly it starts to look like something. Uh, after you've kind of gotten at least halfway through it and then you start to get really excited. Matt has seen that transition here many a times when I'm in the middle of an inlay oh, and, yeah. and I'm cussing and and, yeah. <laughs> and, and pissed off and then suddenly I'm like, the, it flips and I'm super excited Yeah, there's about a it. line that you cross for yeah, sure. For sure. So, uh, that's, it's not really a simple, uh, an easy answer to it, but the, the way that what I would definitely recommend is that um, you keeping it simple, but giving it a try, be willing to, just like everything else on your guitars, be willing to fail. Um, well, and these tools are just for cutting the wood pieces, yeah. out, right? There's another half of the equation, That's true. Right? Yeah. Um, the other half to it is actually um, tools we talked about in a recent video um, for the Stumac tool giveaway, mm -hmm. is you would definitely need some sort of um, Dremel or Fordham tool uh, and uh, the base. With, right. with the bits to, to actually inlay it onto the guitar. But the really cool thing about inlays um, is that you can experiment with making the inlay itself all day long and you never even touch a guitar. Mm -hmm. Like, so you really can't mess up the guitar. Right. You know, you don't, 
inlay it until you've you feel happy about the actual inlay. Yeah. So it's one of those few things that you get a chance to do over. You know. So curiosity, what's the uh, like the inlay that you've ever done, which one had the most pieces in it? Like, what was the, the biggest project you've ever... God, the biggest project I ever did um, is uh, the skyline of Nashville. That's... Oh, I remember that's that one. That's the biggest, yeah. yeah. We'll, I'm sure we're showing a photograph of it right now. Uh, <laughs> that one had 418 pieces in it. Um, and it's an exact Oof. kind of... Um, that's um, Brian Kelly from Florida Georgia Line that commissioned that one for me. And originally he was like, can you do the skyline in Nashville? And in and, and his mind, we'd do a silhouette. And I'm like, you can't just do a silhouette. Yeah, no. Uh, so we, I went I went into <laughs> I had it. had to flex on him. Exactly. <laughs> so we went in. That was his third guitar he'd gotten from me. So we'd worked together before, and we have a good relationship. When it, He knew what to expect. And uh, we just I started getting in on it. And, uh, and man, I, I had never... Had I? No, I had been to Nashville once before I did that inlay. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've been several times since then. But it's funny now when I go to Nashville, that there's a certain spot when you're going over a bridge uh, where that that photograph was taken um, of that skyline, and it's like seared into my brain, like every window <laughs> and like antenna and a door on every building is like seared into my brain. But uh, that one, and then one that I'm currently working on, um, where I did um, Jimi Hendrix and John Lennon. Jimi Hendrix uh, about killed me. Jimi Hendrix was very difficult. Uh, I literally, it's in the paint booth right now. That guitar, it's not even finished yet. But uh, that one was really difficult. Those were the that one was the most technically complicated complex. It had like the, the, you know, even like the little stubble from his his facial hair and stuff was really yeah really wow. difficult. So, well, um, another question that we get a lot, and I'm this one is straight from the comments. Uh, are are your inlays real? Which I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to handle that one. Uh, that's a very existential question. Are your inlays, are <clears throat> yeah, are your inlays real? Um, also, do you use a CNC machine for your mm -hmm. inlays? So that's funny. And, uh, or, and also, I guess, can you even, you know? Yeah, so that's... My inlays absolutely are real, whatever the heck that means. They all um, they all are piles of... They start off as just, like, scrap wood. And, and I literally... 99% of my inlays on my guitars are cut with, still to this day, with this handsaw this thing that we haven't decided what it's called uh, <laughs> and this little pin vise that's like the the vast majority of it um so many people just assume that i must use cnc machine um for doing these inlays and the this the weird irony of it is is that um the cnc machine is not so good at the type of inlays that i do um i use the cnc machine to make the headstock logo inlay just the d um and i'll use it for really simple things like doing like people's initials on the backs of guitars um, things like that, that's about it. The reality of the way that I do my inlays and also what I consider my clients paying for a lot of times for their inlays is the art of it, the human factor of it, the imperfections that, that make it the way that it is. And so like if I'm doing a face of like Johnny Cash, like I did a while ago, you know, I, in order to capture those like certain elements, like if there's a shade or a shadow that's cast on the side of a nose, um, I want to be able to on the fly select exactly what piece of that wood that I'm going to use to cut that little piece of his nose out of mm -hmm. so that I can capture that if there's a nice little grain and kind of the gradient or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and you can't do that on a CNC machine. Um, even even with the smallest bits like a 12 thousandths or a 23 thousandths inch bit, uh, it's just they're too small. I mean, they're not mm -hmm. small enough to really capture all of that detail. And the amount of time it would take me to, dice, to like upload artwork and then to like make individual pieces and, and then vectorize it and get it all yeah, yeah and then yeah. like keep track of each piece like that Jimi Hendrix inlay mm -hmm. I was just telling you about there's like 180 pieces just in Jimi Hendrix's face so like I would have to cut all those people pieces it separate and then like lay them out and keep track of who, what goes where yeah and it's just not possible and I mean I'm sure it's possible but honestly I feel like I get a better result doing it by hand um, I slowly build it out and as you start to get like imperfections in the wood or in the cuts you can make up for them by compensating on the next piece yeah um, so while we're here talking about Jimi Hendrix face um, some of the folks playing along at home might be interested to know you've got like a two or three hard and fast rules uh, that you told me about inlays that maybe it might be a good time to share um, what what are they like a, like I know you never put eyes uh, inside oh a, yeah a fret you know there there's there's a couple really really big rules that mm -hmm. you do um, if you're doing inlays of animals or humans which are quite advanced inlays um those of you that are just getting started probably haven't tried that but if you are you the eyes are the absolute most important thing like 
there's the human the way that the human brain works is that we you know we see eyes uh on animals or people and our brain paints in emotions and paints in kind of uh a lot of the missing details so if you don't get the eyes correct like geometrically correct your brain will go that's ugly that yeah. there's something off about that um the other thing is the placement of said eyes on the fretboard if it's a fretboard inlay is that uh, you can't cut off the eyes the nose or the mouth with a fret so you need to make sure that your placement and if need be the size of it is correct so that none of it gets cut off mm -hmm. that's super super important um, i learned that my first complex inlay was a lion that i did and uh the first couple times those eyes weren't right well the, the hendrix one i keep going back to that but the hendrix one uh man this didn't look right there was something about it that just didn't look right uh, and, and I ended up... It, it, it sucks as a friend whenever Chris is like, hey man, come over here and look at this. What do you think about this inlay right now? And I'm looking at it and I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I know you just spent like four hours working on it, but I don't know, man. You're like, nope, it's dead to me. Yeah. I literally <laughs> like, threw it across. Matt was trying to like, well, maybe you could do this. And I cut it and I threw it. The, uh, like probably 12 pieces. Burn the ships. <laughs> yeah, probably like 12 pieces of wood that I had spent hours on. I just threw them to the other side of the shop. Because the only way to move on is just forget that, start over yeah. on that section, and move forward with it. Uh, and it, it came out so much better the second time. But yeah, so yeah. Um, what makes uh, what makes a good inlay to, uh, in in your brain? Like, what, whenever you see an inlay that looks bad, you and we kind of just talked about that. That's part of the reason I'm asking this question. But like, even something as simple as like lettering or mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know some of the more basic stuff like headstock and yeah. stuff. What what makes a good lay inlay and what makes a great inlay? So for me, and obviously the inlays and stuff are very, uh, they're subjective, just like all, all art. And, and so there's going to be people watching this right now who don't like inlays on their guitars at all. I Leave get, us a comment. <laughs> I, I totally get that. In fact, it's funny because uh, that's separate from that question, mm -hmm. is the, the longer I do this, uh, the more I start to gravitate towards clean guitars that don't have inlays mm -hmm. on them, even though I've kind of gotten known as an inlay artist. Uh, but <laughs> your whole typecast now, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But what makes a great inlay to me is uh, a it has to tell a story. Mm. That's super important. Um, so there's a re so with all my guitars that I build, we don't really kind of get too far into the inlay discussion until the physical guitar is built. Um, I always tell folks I have to I have to build the canvas first. So we build the guitar before we put finish on it, before mm -hmm. I put frets on it, you know, it's physically a body and a neck and a fretboard. That's when we start making decisions with the inlays. And the reason that we do that is because the guitar itself is going to have a look to it. And I want to be able to hang that guitar on the wall and stare at it and see visually where's this guitar leading us. Uh, and sometimes you might have an idea of what you want to do with inlays early on. And then once the guitar's finished, you go, oh, it doesn't need that yeah. because it has a certain look to it that I hadn't imagined. Or the other way around, you might go, you know what would look really cool because of that that cool piece of grain on the back? We mm -hmm. should accent it with this thing on the front. So that's that's important. A, don't come up with inlay decisions on the guitar too far, I think, in my opinion, until you are finished the major construction on the guitar. But the most important one to me is that it tells a story. I don't do inlays for inlay's sake on my guitars. It may seem like that, I think, for some folks. They see my guitars and they go, why in the hell would you put you know, John Mayer on on a fretboard. Well, that's not my story. Yeah, that's not my decision to put the John Mayer on the guitar. That's a client, and there's a reason why they have those inlays on their guitar. Um, the John, the, the Jimi Hendrix, and the John Lennon one. His children's name are Hendrix and Lennon. There's a reason why we've got those faces on those guitars because they mean a lot to the client and they tell part of their story. Mm -hmm. um, and like the the, John, the Bob Dylan one, his, his obviously the guy loves Bob Dylan and named his son Dylan. Tell, not Bob? Yeah, not Bob. I know, right? <laughs> Seems like it was there. Okay, all right, fine. <laughs> but we do, we want to make sure that these these guitars have have a story. I want I want folks to, to see these uh, either in somebody's hands or on the wall, and then they go, well, tell, well, what's the choices there? Why'd you do that? And for me, either me or the customer to be able to go, well, let me tell you why. Yeah. Uh, and it's got a really cool story to it. So that's that's the important thing for me. And that obviously, it visually, it looks right. And that it doesn't, uh, I guess another really hard and fast rule for inlays would be like to not put it somewhere that is going to uh, um, sonically affect the instrument. Oh, sure. You don't just place them on the fret, on the soundboard somewhere and things like that. Well, people do, but... People it's, do. It's, it's, yeah. I'm looking at uh, you, Luna Guitars. 
<laughs> just gonna put them on blast, That's huh? Right. <laughs> One last question, because um, I see you've got a book here. What, uh, if you've done some headstock inlays and you know, you, you've kind of advanced and maybe you've messed around with some really simple designs, but you want to find inspiration and you want to take your inlay game to the next level, mm. What are some places that people can look to for inspiration? Yeah, um, for that. Who are some names? Who are some names of some artists, inlay artists that you like? Yeah, and uh, maybe is there any kind of literature or whatever? Well, the first one is this. This book right here changed my life. Um, this is by Grit Laskin. If you don't know who Grit Laskin is, then uh, check him out. But this is a book called Grand Complications. Um, it's so good. It's just a, it's a the whole front half of it is just like photographs of each of many of his guitars. But the really cool thing is is that as you go to the back of the book, he's got the how-to. Not the how-to, but the story behind the inlay and the process that he went into making it and how he went about designing it. Even like the pencil drawings and things like that. And Grit is a master of storytelling on his fretboards. These Each, each fretboard, literally without needing any explanation, you look at it and you go, oh, I get what he was doing there. And there's always something new to look at. Um, he uses all stone, reconstituted stones and pearls. Um, stylistically, I moved away from that, but I started there. When I mm -hmm. started, I did a guitar for um, the Grammys years ago. I built uh, for Fleetwood Mac, and I had just read Grand Complications. And so you'll see, we'll put the photos up, uh, the stylistically you know, Mick Fleetwood and, and Stevie Nicks and all them. I, I did them in a Grit Laskin style. Came out super good. Um, but this was a huge inspiration for me. The other one is just Instagram, honestly. Okay. <laughs> uh, there's so many artists that I'm not familiar with that I couldn't even name right now that you just see like certain inlays yeah. online. You're like, dude, that's freaking killer. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely love that. Um, but we haven't really hit on it here. I do want to say like that you need to come up with a way that you can kind of start designing inlays. Mm -hmm. um, if, if this is something that you want to do, find things that inspire you that, that go, I really love that. But then there's the, well, then how do I execute, right? Right. Um, for me, the big aha moment was um, this lion inlay that I had years ago. Well, a client wanted me to do a lion, and I kept telling him, like, listen, man, like, I think i got to draw the line. Uh, I can't do that. It's too complicated. Like... He actually literally had a photo of a line inlay that he wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. A, I won't copy that inlay, so I need to come up with my own design. Mm -hmm. uh, B, I can't do it. And then it occurred to me, after months of wrestling with uh, trying to come up with something, that an inlay is kind of like a paint by number. Yeah. And if you look at an inlay, that's exactly what it is, right? So then I flipped it in reverse and said, okay, well, if I can take a photograph and then convert that into a paint by number, then each what would be a paint block is now just a chunk of wood, then I can reconstruct the inlay. What he's saying, he took his young son's uh, paint by numbers <laughs> book, and that's been, that's every, every, no. everyone, everyone for the last uh, Listen, four years has all been from his kid's coloring book. <laughs> that first line inlay, the, the <laughs> photograph we're showing right now, I literally typed in lion paint by number, on Google, uh -huh. and I found just a blank printable page of a lion that you could do. <laughs> it was awesome. a paint by number. Did uh, you leave the numbers in there? <laughs> I should have. <laughs> and it came out super good. And that's literally the foundation of every inlay that I've ever done since then. Yeah. So the way that I kind of go about doing them now, and this isn't that how-to video, but the way that I do it is like I'll take a photograph. I'll find a, like I'm doing one now here that I've I've mocked up um, the the all of the inlays that we're gonna put on the fretboard. So that I know what size they need to be, so that they don't kind of intersect with any of the frets. But one of John Mayer, uh, Eric Clapton, it's going to be Stevie Ray Vaughan now, and Jimmy Page on the guitar. So I find photographs of each person. Um, like here's here's Eric Clapton. Lots of photographs of Eric Clapton. But it's not just finding a photograph. It's finding a photograph that will fit that they're facing the way that I want. Uh, the, the correct size and kind of tells the story. But then I actually go into Adobe Illustrator and then I um, I vectorize the photographs. I turn them into, I basically turn the photo into a paint by number. Yeah. Um, and then I go through and I individually select like, okay, that's too small or I can change like the different sizes of the colors mm -hmm. um, to the correct, correct gradations. Uh, and then I print out, you know, dozens of copies of this and I'll, I'll, cut that little piece out and make rebuild the piece but it still is based off of that same idea right it's how do i take a photograph capture all of the different 
um, colors that are inside of it that are important um, and then basically rebuild it from the inside out as a paint by number but instead of paint I'm using different types of wood so that's what's been to me the biggest thing was coming up with a way that worked for the way my brain worked yeah you know because for the longest time it was like well that's beautiful but I have no idea how to do that uh, and so that was it for me. And now when I look at people's inlays online, that that's that's the way that I look at it. Or if a client comes to me and asks for something that's, you know, on paper kind of impossible, I can kind of go, well, if I was to paint that, how would, how would I do that? Yeah. Because uh, I'm by no means, um, I'm not an artist. I can't, some people look at what I do and they go, oh, you must be a great artist. And, and I say artist in the sense, like, I can't draw. I'm a, t I'm a horrible drawer. Um, but... I use photographs of right. the things that my customers want, and then I, I go from there. So yeah, um, it's incredibly difficult to sum up this video inlays, at, especially at the, the level that I'm doing them, where you're doing like crazy, you know, John, you know, all the things that I just showed you. Yeah, that's gonna be um, that's probably gonna take me a month to do all of these inlays on this guitar. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where I am now, but. It's doable for anybody at home who wants to do inlays at like a more advanced level. I, I definitely recommend that you give it a try. Don't be afraid of it, um, but know that it's 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 probably not going to be super great at first, just like everything else you did with a guitar. But it's it's a skill set in and of itself that you just have to work on and get better at. Yeah. Well, if you guys have any other questions about um, inlays, leave them below because this is definitely not the last video that we'll ever do no. about inlays. Obviously, we're but, gonna do <clears throat> some nitty gritty how to stuff. Yeah. This on is inlays. and this is absolutely just like a. Again, the it's the, you watch this video before you start doing inlays, yes. you know. And also, I think we hopefully dispelled a little bit of some of the myths around some of my inlays. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they are real. They are really. in fact real. They're no, really real. No laser cutters. No. Uh, no CNC. Uh, but yeah, he's just a psychopath. Just a psychopath. <laughs> he sits there <laughs> in a chair for hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I did. Oh, hang on, it's right over here. I've joked with Chris in the past. Like I've I, I've told him that yeah, there's a there's a chance that sometime in the future I'll be able to build a guitar that sounds acoustically probably as good as one of yours does. I'm never going to do an inlay. Yeah. Dude. I just don't. Oh, God. This is my oh. my Jimmy Page uh, fretboard. This took me, I think, two hours yesterday to make Jimmy's fretboard on his guitar. You know, it's a level of dedication. It's also super meta. It's a fretboard on a fretboard. It's a fr <laughs> Yeah, it's a guitar on a guitar. <laughs> yeah, um, listen, thanks everybody for watching. Um, yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll see you guys in the next we'll video. See you in the next one. Yep. Yep.